Hi, I'm Steve Dockery and welcome back to the Moot Workshop. Today we're going to talk about how to take apart a 2002 iMac flat panel. Uh, this was the new iMac design uh, after the original sort of all-in-one that had a CRT in it. This was quite a revelation actually, a flat panel on an arm, a swing arm, uh, people called it the desk lamp uh, iMac. Um, and it's easy to upgrade in a way. There's a panel on the bottom with four little screws and you can take that panel off and you can put the airport card in and out. Uh, you can uh, add RAM to that part, but there's built-in RAM as well inside. And of course there's the hard drive and other things. And Apple sort of has an off again, on again uh, attitude about upgrading your own stuff. And so getting to those things are actually a little bit difficult. It's complex to take apart and it's complex to put it back together again. So we're gonna talk about that today. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention is uh, in 2002, when this machine came out, uh, that summer, I was in Cupertino for two weeks studying to be a Mac genius. And uh, we trained taking these apart and doing repairs on them. Uh, so I actually had one of these completely disassembled as part of my training, all the way down to just the neck was all that was left. So it was a bit of a deja vu here, digging into this thing uh, 18 years later. So let's go at it. Okay, we got it laying down on the bench here. I got a coffee cup supporting the neck of it so it can sit up. Um, because I don't want to put weight on the screen. I'm going to turn the body of this around that way so that the optical drive is sticking that way because the cables kind of come out this way. We need to take the bottom off it. So the first thing we need to do is get that bottom plate off again. Let's do that real quick. That's the bottom plate. Now we've got four Torx T15 screws. Those come out of there. And that's all that's holding the bottom on, but they're pretty long. I should point out that when you're working on one of these guys, you don't want to touch anything in here. You don't want to touch the RAM out here, for example, but you also don't want to touch anything inside the box of it unless you have discharged any static electricity that may be on you. And even if you think it is too humid for there to be static electricity on you, believe me, you are mistaken. There's always some, and static electricity can murder these solid-state devices in here. So at the very least, ground yourself on the case before you touch anything inside of it. And it's even better if you're using an anti-static wrist strap that's connected to a ground. So here we go. There's the last screw. All right, let's crack it open. Um, I'll hold on to the neck and pull on some of the ports back here. There we go. All right, so that's coming apart. There's a plug right here that comes unplugged. And then there's some wires that are bendable. And oh my, that is an absolute mess. There is so much dust in there. Okay, we're back. I blew all the dust out of here. Um, you might be tempted to use a vacuum cleaner. And if you have a special vacuum cleaner for this purpose, then by all means, but sometimes vacuum cleaners can generate static electricity and I just wanted to be careful. So I used compressed air from a can, you know, those duster cans, blew all the dust out of here. Now I can at least see what I'm working on. Before I proceed, let me point out some things. And again, don't touch anything unless you've discharged yourself on stuff and probably don't even touch things if you don't absolutely have to, just in case. So I'm just gonna point so what we have is, that's the processor. The bottom of that 
is mounted onto a thermal pad that actually connects to this metal shell on the inside of the plastic shell. There's a metal shell that encloses this whole machine, which is why we have to worry about the thermal paste because that's the heat sink for the processor. There are places where you have to put thermal paste. There's one, and there may be other ones. I'm going to have to make sure I'm looking at the right things. Um, yeah, that may be the only one. Um, that's imperative so that it'll transfer the heat from the processor into the uh, heat sink, which is the whole body of the thing. Uh, we have... Uh, the memory here is the internal memory because there is some memory that's already there and you can upgrade it with the memory you see on the outside. Um, this can be upgraded, but obviously it's a, it's a bigger project. Uh, I believe that's the modem. Uh, that is the video card uh, connection to the screen. And of course, the hard drive connections and the uh, optical drive is sitting right here. The drives are stacked above it. And the parameter RAM battery is right here. All right, now let's put this thing back together. So this is the only place we need to put the compound. It needs to go where these two surfaces mate together. But first we need to get the old compound off. Um, you should use something that isn't metal so it doesn't scratch the metal surface. Um, I'm using a piece of sheet plastic that I have lying around. If you have a plastic scraper of some kind, make sure that you've touched something metal beforehand to not have any static electricity. And then you just want to scrape any of that compound off of that surface that happens to be there. You just want it to be nice and shiny. No residue because the compound you're putting in has got to fill every little gap. If there's anything there, it's going to keep it from mating properly. So that side looks pretty good. This side needs some scraping. There's quite a bit of stuff still clinging to this side of it. All right, that's got it kind of clean. Now what we're going to use is we're going to use this MX4 thermal compound. And if I had actually opened the envelope that came in, I would have noticed that it came with a little plastic spatula. So we could have used this for scratching this stuff off, but we will use this to spread the stuff. Okay, so let's take the top off of this stuff and put some, whoops, <laughs> put some on the, the surface here. See, it's just kind of a gray goo. You don't need a lot of it because it's just got to fill all the gaps. So let's take the little spatula and spread that out so it covers the whole surface. So we want to have some on every bit of the contact between the two pieces of metal. Try not to get a lot of it in the screw hole because it'll make it hard for the screw to seat. If you get this spread nicely so that the entire surface is coated with it, then when we put the thing back together again, we won't have any problems. There we go. All right, now let's put this thing back together. Now, you probably can't see, but right here there's a connector in the board that mates up with the connector on the case. So if we get everything lined up, I'm going to tuck some wires in over here. If we get everything lined up, then the connector should actually line right up as well. And there we go. Okay, now it's just a matter of putting the four screws back in. Now the thing about the screws is that they need to be put in with a reasonable amount of force, but not so much that they're too strong, but they do need to be strong enough to make sure that that heat transfer happens. So we just make them nice and firm. Don't tighten until you just literally can't make them any tighter, but make them good and, good and firm. And also, I wouldn't tighten any of them down solid until you get all of them lined up because the, the case 
fidgets around a bit. It has various little pieces of metal that are meant to make electrical connections between the shield around the back where all the ports are, and they will shove it around. So what I've got now is I've got everything pretty much lined up. And I should be able to just tighten all the screws down. Nice and tight. So after I bring these all up to snug, then I'm going to give them all just a extra twist to make sure they're nice and tight. I'll put the bottom plate on and it actually goes on any old which way but since I am such a perfectionist about certain things I like to put it so that the apple is facing that way to line this up properly there we go and you can feel when it's lined up it actually snaps right into place and the screws only take a couple of turns and now it's all back in one piece